Welcome back to Web Brass and Glass. Today I'm working at a little shop here near Portland, Oregon. Um, I'm using a uh, oxygen acetylene torch to maybe create a pattern inside of a magnet. Going to do a rectangular magnet, it's one inch by two inch by quarter inch thickness. Just try to put a, a weave pattern on it. So I'll start at the torch. There it goes. Next, got a little ring magnet. Let's see if we can just not burn the paper. Do a little, uh. That's good enough. And. Let's see. Just touch the edge. Touch the edge here. Let's do one here. Oh, yeah, that's good. Whee, fire! I do have magnetic viewing film here. So I'm going to give these suckers a chance to cool down after a few minutes and then check out and see what happens with the magnetic viewing film. Not pretty. Okay, relocated me indoors. So here's the field on the ring. It looks like it killed it. Look at this field. There's half the ring. There's a barely a ghost distortion of the other side. But there's the etch, and I think what yeah it cracked. Hmm, I didn't see that first. So I think what happened is the heat traveled across. The distortion's kind of in the center. It basically killed the field halfway. That makes sense about right to there. That's where I heated it. The heat traveled across to those points. Okay, so at least I know now that's what happens. For the next one, the rectangular. So here's the next one. The rectangular guy lightly hit it and it came out in pieces and yeah pretty much the piece that fragmented off was the piece that still has the field so can't really draw designs into a magnet with a flame it's just too hot seeing that that flame was around 3000 degrees or so maybe you can kind of have a light distortion there. It didn't crack there, but the field ended there, so interesting. You can see that point right here. Okay. I hit it right right there. So let's see. I think that's the side. Big blotch. I must not have hit it long enough. There's not really anything on here. Yeah, it'd be cool if it did that. <laughs> so, not much of anything. I don't think I hit it long enough. There's a burn mark. Okay. So, I disconnected it, took it off by itself. And, ooh, look at that. Smiley face! Well, it does have differentials in it, but that's not really what I'm going for. Flip around. Same thing. So basically the heat killed it. Those, I did hit it in a few spots. Oh yeah, there and there. And that's where the distortion hit. Funny it didn't, I didn't hit it here. At least I don't think I did. It's basically in one solid ring we have three magnets inside of one. 
but that doesn't really help my cause because I can't draw fields. Okay. So what I learned today with using the torch to try to create a custom field inside the three magnets is that it's, at least the way I'm doing it, it ain't gonna work at all. I could blotch out large areas on those magnets as you saw, but being able to create a nice, clean, defined, tight line, then it's just not gonna happen. Um, so I'm just gonna continue on with experimenting. I think what'll work pretty well is the electromagnetizer and the shaped jigs on the magnets. Um, the other thing I thought is on the bigger arc sections for the SEG generator is to use a EDM wire cutter. Uh, it can easily cut through neodymium and has an accuracy of 0 0.0005 microns. That's pretty accurate. Uh, <laughs> pretty darn accurate. So I'll probably hook up with a guy that has one and maybe go that direction, um, possibly. I'll do the electromagnetizer first once I get all the electrical equipment going. Uh, purchased and ordered, and arrives, and hook up. So anyway, uh, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it some, and everybody gets to see what what happens when you apply a flame to a magnet, uh, a torch, and it's not all that exciting. So uh, click here to subscribe, and click here to join my Facebook channel, channel, my Facebook page for the Surlfic Generator Replica. And we'll see you guys in the next video. God bless. Take care.